Welcome to AW 2020. And this is part of a little exclusive series we're doing to take you behind the scenes with key thought leaders, key members of our AW 2020 global family. And with us today is a longtime friend, uh, Harry Cardman, founder and CEO of Cargo. Good to have you, Harry. Thanks, Matt. So great to be here and hopefully participate virtually with everybody in the industry. And uh, thanks for having me on. It's a great joy to have you. So, uh, Harry, we only got about 10 minutes. I want to go through a couple of things, but I'd love to start by talking about how as founder and CEO of Cargo, how you are maintaining culture, you know, being there for your team internally. I want to talk about what you're doing with your clients as well, but responsibility sort of starts at home with your own family in your house, of course, but also your cargo family. Yeah. So, you know, this is, uh, I started the company in 2003. So this is my 18th year, somewhere around there. And um, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride. Um, you know, we've had challenges, I think, like every company, especially right now with uh, what's happening with coronavirus and quarantine and the fact that I'm looking out at my offices. I came in to get a quiet place because my home is, is uh, I've got three kids. One of them just starts school today. Two of, them other, two of the other ones are being shipped off to school uh, tomorrow, um, you know, just to, to get a, a, a quiet place to think. And I'm looking out at my offices behind this. I'm sitting in my conference room and, uh, and there's literally nobody here, which is a little eerie. Um, you know, this used to be a thriving, bustling place, and there's there's incredible energy and momentum, and you know, online now, you know, in the Zoom rooms and on Slack. Um, but it is really challenging to keep uh, a sense of culture, you know, together. We're still borrowing from all of the good times and the interactions that we had when we were, you know, together in person. But as obviously as time goes by, I think it's challenging. Um, to figure out how to keep those threads of connection uh, between all the people in the company. And so we're working really hard at it. We created a series where we were learning how to make coffee together and we were doing yoga together and we were doing meditation together as a company and inviting our clients in to join us on that. Um, but even with all of those programs, um, it's not the same thing as, as sitting down and having a meal with somebody or sitting in a room and brainstorming with a whiteboard. And, you know, I miss that, just looking out at the, at the empty hall office behind this camera. Um, I, can, I can give you some sense of it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be some, it's gonna be challenging as we, as we figure out how, to, how do we bring everyone back together again, or whether we even do that in the first place, as, you know, many companies are exploring more remote types of relationships between the company and, and the people that work there. And as the leader of Cargo, you're on the front lines with your clients, helping them navigate through this challenging period as well. Tell us about some of the uh, ways that Cargo has been able to you know, work and support your clients as they're going through their own day-to-day -day challenges. Yeah, so uh, as the pandemic hit, uh, in mid-March, uh, we saw incredible challenges, not only culturally inside the company and people starting to work remotely. Um, and it's really a testament to, to my team to, uh, to figure out how to sort of reorganize itself uh, around Zoom, uh, around virtual meetings, around Slack as primarily new ways to communicate, but figuring out how to interact with our clients, our customers, by giving them insights uh, that we see across the, the ent entire sort of uh, universe of clients that we work with. I think those insights about how best practices and how other people are working, um, things that we're seeing from a programmatic perspective in terms of, for example, um, which publishers are doing well, which publishers are not doing well, what content is actually starting to flash and really sort of uh, be successful in terms of garnering audience and, and which content is, is, is not being as successful in this environment. Um, what, what types of units and formats get 
higher viewability, what slots on advertisers' pages uh, tend to get more engagement, um, and basically the very fundamentals of how do you transform your entire marketing operation um, that used to depend on um, outdoor um, advertising, used to depend on events, sports, um, Times Square billboards, uh, Super Bowl ads, um, even even you know large scale billboards inside of the arenas. How do you transform that to a digital only or digital first approach, where you can get that same level of um, capturing consumer attention and being in front of them and reminding them and even driving action, either foot traffic into store if it was. Uh, those those businesses that remained open, uh, whether those are big box retailers or pharmacies or whether there are brands that you need in your life like food brands. Um, and even those companies that were most affected from a travel perspective, um, from a from an entertainment perspective, how do you think about what is the foundation you want to lay today, uh, knowing that at some point there'll be a vaccine, there'll be a return to a normal I call it normalcy, you know, how do you lay the foundation for those companies so that they, they have some level of communication and, and connection with their consumers who are on, I would say, pause, but are not canceled from uh, wanting to understand that they're still alive and all the measures that they're trying to put in place. So I want to build off one of the words that you use, which was connection. And when I think of you, Harry, and Cargo, you sort of sit at the center of that connection ecosystem that defines our industry as it is today. You're connecting technology, you're connecting with corporations, you're connecting with clients, you're connecting with consumers, and you sit right in the middle of that space. It's got to be tough for uh, a guy who is a connector and a people person to be adapting. How tough has it been for you um, as the leader of your family at home and the leader of your cargo family at work? Well, it's been an adjustment. I guess that would be the best, the best way to put it. A, a pretty broad adjustment. Um, when I'm in the office and we're on time and we're setting meetings, things, uh, things are like a train. You sort of have, you have some control over your schedule. You have some control over... Uh, even popping in and connecting with people. I mean, I, I was on a podcast earlier and my 17 year old walks into the kitchen where I was shooting it. And she decided that that was the right time to make herself a smoothie. And the person who was interviewing me was like, Oh, what's in this smoothie? What are the ingredients? Cause when she hit the button on the smoothie maker on the blender, it basically overpowered the entire podcast. I'm like, do you have any idea of like what's going on around you? And like any teenager, she doesn't really care about anything, usually, unless she's reminded about what's going on. She was like, wet, I'm hungry. Um, so I think that that going with the flow and understanding that you don't have the, the sense of control over your schedule, over the environment that you used to have or you expected, is something that is probably the greatest adjustment for anybody in this industry. Um, without naming names, there was a CMO who I was of a very large, a very well-known, huge branded corporation. And she was relatively new in her job. And she was with the entire executive team who was asking her about what, you know, what the brand was going to do given all the challenges. It was at the very height of Corona uh, in sort of early mid April. And her four-year-old flashes the entire group in the background, buck naked asking where his cape was because he wanted to run around with a Superman cape. And she was like, well, hold on to that question. Give me one second. Let me just right. take care of what's going on behind me. Right. So that is the state of, I think, the industry and the world right now. Um, and that allowance to be human uh, and the allowance for imperfection, um, I think, is the new normal. And so with a little bit of that allowance and the ability to be in this together, I think we've actually made massive progress um, on some level between clients, between our publisher partnerships and, and between you know, agencies that we work with, because I think there is now a perception that everybody's working 
as best we can for the greater good with the goal of actually pushing through this together. And that creates a much better relationship um, because there is a sense of forgiveness and trust uh, with a responsibility to really try to get it right. So, Harry, it's become very popular. We hear everybody use the words, the new normal. And it's become very popular to try to predict what behaviors that we've used to adapt to this period will stay with us. We all know that eventually we're going to be back in our offices. We're going to be back in Madison Square Garden or, you know, I saw a great article this morning about the new football stadium in L.A. Eventually there will be fans in that football stadium. What's your sense as to what behaviors that we've used to adapt here will stay with us once this corona fog lifts? Yeah, so I was surprised at the level of efficiency and success that we had um, working remotely and, and actually getting real goals done. I was worried that there would be a lack of efficiency in terms of developing new product, thinking about the market, looking at the data. Um, but the reality is, uh, because we were all locked in and work was one of the few things that you could you could do and feel like you were making progress, we probably experienced a level of efficiency from a digital activation and implementation perspective that for a period of time that we may not experience again in our lifetime because of there really wasn't balance, I think, in many people's lives based upon what, what happened. Um, I can tell you coming out of this that the number of products we were able to bring to market, um, we haven't had in, in the company in, in decades, like probably since we were a small startup with far fewer people. So I'm really proud at the adaptation of our team to working remotely. When things start to open up, the question is, will there be more pulls on people's time? Will they try to find more balance? And I, I hate that word, but will they, will they be... Will there be a, a different use of time and therefore sort of the efficiency that gained in this particular period? I know that's controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, will not necessarily carry over. That's the, that's the first thing. That's the first insight. I would say the broader insight is consumers are much more comfortable with e-commerce, ordering online and delivery to home than I think has ever been before. I think that will continue. There's no question that from a Walmart perspective, from an Amazon perspective, even uh, ordering from smaller places, the, 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 the idea of that on-demand economy of delivering things to the home, that's going to be here, here to stay. I also think from a, from a efficiency perspective, maybe not necessarily in management, I think managers who are building large-scale strategies together will probably be back in office. But I think the idea of a single contributor uh, role in a company could really be from anywhere. And I think mm -hmm. for, for that's how we're thinking about it. Roles that are single contributor roles where somebody can come in, do the work, and they don't need to, to manage other people or they don't need to rely on other inputs that require sort of coordination. Those roles can be hired anywhere in the world. And I think that that's going to be here to stay as well. So those are the two insights that I would have that I think are going to be fundamental fundamental change will create fundamental change to the to the broader work environment as well as to the consumer experience. And Harry, from a bottom line vantage point, how is the business doing overall? Give us a, a you know a peek into the cargo business. So you know we've had we had many years ago, now it feels like many years ago, three, four years ago, we had this growth. We were growing 100% year over year. We went from a small team to 300 people. And I would say over the last couple of years, we've sort of been recalibrating what the right size is. Uh, our headcount was reduced. Uh, this was all pre-corona. Um, so we sort of right-sized the company um, in the last couple of years. Um, we've seen, because I think sports... Um, there's no new television shows. There's no really outdoor advertising. There's been this, this consolidation of media in, in digital. We've mm -hmm. seen, other than the very scary period of April and May, pretty extraordinary growth in the company, which is super exciting. And the silver lining for me is 
you know, I also got to spend a ton more time with my kids. So the fact that I got time with my kids who would all been with their friends out of the house, uh, I got time back with them. And the, the company is going through this renaissance period where we've never delivered more new products to market. And with significant revenue growth, um, you know, it's, it's um, I guess there's always silver linings, although, you know, I think everybody has gone through an adjustment period and it's been pretty tough overall. Yeah, no, well, well, well said, absolutely. Well, this Thank was great. You. Thank you for our little exclusive behind the scenes with Harry Cargman, founder and CEO of Cargo, and we'll see you throughout the week. Thanks so much. 2020. Great, pal. Talk to you soon. All right, bye. Bye.